when we look at a project of this magnitude, that's why it's so important. Uh, it's important on a lot of levels. Obviously, the sacrifice, the dedication, the commitment that those young people made to a project that um, every time I tell somebody about it, nobody can believe it. And now it's here in film version where the world gets an opportunity to see it and not only believe it, but embrace it, I, I, I hope. And then the fact that the reality, which we knew when we built the Negro Leagues Museum, that it was literally a race against time. That the people we were celebrating were all going to be gone. And that in, not, in the not so distant future, none of them were going to be there. So what stood at risk was that this precious piece of baseball in Americana was going to go extinct if it was not for the work that we do in Kansas City to keep this history alive and well so that future generations will have an opportunity to learn, not only learn this history, be inspired by the passion, the perseverance, the determination, the courage that these men demonstrated in the face of adversity. Well, these kids got a first-hand, I think, understanding and I hope appreciation for what life on the road was for these men. They were heroes. And, and heroes not in the superficial sense in which we use that word so often and probably overuse that word today. These men were truly heroes. Because to me, the story of the Negro Leagues embodies the American spirit unlike any story in the annals of American history. It is everything we pride ourselves about being American because it is about pride, it's about passion, it's about perseverance. It is about the refusal to accept the notion that you're unfit to do anything, so I'll show you. So even though it was America that was trying to prevent them from sharing in the joys of her so-called national pastime, it was the American spirit that allowed them to persevere and prevail. And to me, that's what makes the story so compelling, so awe-inspiring. And, and so the kids captured that. And, and I have to literally take my hat off to my friend Gary Thompson because he's done an extraordinary job of, first of all, putting this idea together, convincing some young people that they could give up their summer <laughs> to, to do this, and I think more importantly, and probably we lost a little bit of sight of that, the parents who allowed their children to embark on this journey. You know, because I'm not sure that a whole lot of parents would have allowed their kids to do that. So all of the parents who were involved in this project, they are just as important to the outcome and success of this as those who obviously worked their tails off to make sure that this project happened and the commitment and the the dedication that these young people showed and you know when they were about to run out of money and not knowing whether or not they were going to be able to complete this journey and all of those kids committed themselves to wanting to make sure they got to Kansas City and, and of course to see the images of my, my dear friend Buck O'Neill it's, it's hard to believe that it's been it'll be 10 years in October since it's passed and, and I was telling Gary and Carla last night over dinner everywhere I go somebody got a Buck O'Neill story so it, it is essentially kept him alive it has kept him alive, and, and even for me, as I share the stories that he shared so passionately uh, with us for so many years, and now I get to share them with the new generation of folks who come to visit the museum on a daily basis, it keeps him alive. And obviously, his spirit is there at 18 to 5. But I also feel like his spirit is in this room tonight. And, and I, I just get the feeling that uh, somewhere in that great somewhere, old Buck is looking down and he's saying, job well done.